Hello, we're in my bedroom again, which means Grogu is a little video friend. So today I am going to talk about what being a critical reader means, because I've seen a lot of discussion recently about being a critical reader and what exactly that entails. And to be honest, it took me a really long time to finally get to the stage where I feel like the way I read and the way I critically read is actually gotten like is actually done well. It took me a really long time to kind of figure out different parts of books and how I sort of picked apart certain aspects and analysing the kind of like character and the plot and structure and I know this sounds a little bit too much like a English GCSE lesson um, but I think that it's really good to kind of keep that critical mindset. So I have found that there are different stages in being a critical reader. There is like overall criticisms of the book and how you're feeling when you're reading it. There is the writing, there is the characters, there is the plot and it is kind of getting to that stage where you can separate all of those things. For the longest time I kind of finished a book and I'd be like yeah I liked that or I'd finish the book and I'd be like mm, I didn't like that and I didn't really look much more into it and I think that that's definitely something which does come with the more you read. <laughs> when I was a teenager and I was really into Twilight I read Twilight and thought I loved it because there were aspects of it that I liked but I kind of grouped it together as a I loved the whole thing rather than separating it and being like okay so I liked this but this bit I didn't like whereas when I did my Twilight reread last year 2019 might have been 2019 now I literally don't even know what time is which I will link in the description I did a full series reread I could be a lot more critical and then when I read Midnight Sun uh this year I also was a lot more critical but could also pick out aspects that I thought okay I liked that. For example the way that uh, in Midnight Sun, uh, this is a little bit spoilery, but the way that uh, Charlie Swan's thoughts are and the way that Edward can read his thoughts I thought was really clever and like kind of like a link to why Bella's thoughts he can't read um and i also definitely you could see that stephanie meyer's writing had become a lot more like it had matured and it had gotten a lot better and i thought that it was a better written book compared to the first four 4.5 if you can't read tanner books in the series um but overall i still understand twilight has very problematic elements and, and there is definitely things to critique. And that is also a very big thing in when I read Stephen King books. Um, and recently I did a What I Got For Christmas video, I will link that in the description as well, and I had comments on that about Stephen King and I also had messages about that on other social medias um, about Stephen King's decisions. Because in the video I speak about my relationship with Stephen King books and I haven't read a lot of Stephen King. I have read The Shining, I have read Doctor Sleep, I have read Firestarter, I have read Carrie, I've read It and I'm currently in the middle of The Stand which is my gonna be my first book that I finished in 2021 uh, but it is a big boy and I got lots of Stephen King books for Christmas um, and I was talking about my relationship with Stephen King because he is an interesting author in the sense that what he writes is really good, his plot is really detailed, he has very interesting characters and I love the dynamics of the way that he tells stories. However, I do not enjoy some of the language that Stephen King uses. He is a white man who in my opinion uses the n-word in his books far too much. There are also scenes in his books where I don't understand how it made it in. It is a prime example of that. I... mm-hmm. No, no. You know what I mean? I think people thought I was just like hating on Stephen King. I think that he is definitely an author where people are critical but also can appreciate that he does tell a good story and his plots are really good and I mean fair play to the man with how much he gets his books out like he he does it. And I definitely think that uh, the things that he includes have toned down in his later books. But the stand is is interesting and I think that that's what's really important when being when being a critical reader is understanding that being critical does not mean that you hate some 
thing, completely hate it and despise it and think it's the worst thing ever. For those that don't know, I used to teach uh, English to GCSE students um, and I used to tell them that being critical doesn't mean picking out negative things always. You can be critical and pick out good things. A good critical essay, as I was told many a time at uni, at school, so much when I did my math, so much when I did my masters and what I pass on to my students is that being critical does not always mean you're being negative. Being able to critique something is to pick out every element of it and pick something apart. Me saying, okay, so this about Stephen King I really, really like, but then this, however, like, that's not a hate on Stephen King. That's not a he is an awful, despicable human being. That is a, I'm looking at the literature that he writes and I'm picking it apart, good and bad. And I think that's what's really important about being a critical reader is that being a critical reader can also mean that you can pick apart the things that you absolutely love about it. The book that I am my most critical reader self with is Aristotle and Dante in the sense that it is my favourite book in the world and I can pick out all of the elements that make me love it so much to the point where I am so like digging so deep into it for like the you know the writing structure the way that the story is told the layout of the book like that is being a critical reader but I'm not being negative and I think that that is the distinction and I think it's also really important to know that you can be critical and be both positive and negative but that doesn't mean that you're like trying to cancel someone just because you picked out the the way that the writing was wasn't particularly the strongest point of a novel there has become this sort of thing online and i've seen it with a lot of reviews where it's sort of seen as this inherently negative thing and that you can't pick out all aspects of something which obviously isn't true. If you look at something completely positively and you only pick out the positive elements, that's not being critical just as much as only picking out the negative elements. You know, if you can only, if you know, if you pick something out and you don't, like, if you just say like, oh yeah, I love this, this and this and this, but like, you don't want to pick it apart, that's not being critical just as much as only being negative is not being critical. Another thing which I think is really important is to be critical of the things that you love. Um, that's a I, I, shameless plug. I have a podcast. It's a Stranger Things podcast. We've got a channel, but we're going to be doing loads of Stranger Things themed videos on that channel. So if you want to go check it out, Hawkins podcast will be in the description. Go check it out. But on the podcast, we essentially pick apart the show. We pick apart like, the influences to the show. We pick apart certain episodes, certain characters, certain things. And it is something that we really love. It is a fandom that we I like adore like this show it's our favorite show like we absolutely love Stranger Things but we pick apart elements that we don't particularly like but then also elements that we think are done really really well and really try and give a critical viewpoint of the show both positive and negative uh both positive and negative and I think that that's really important when it comes to being critical of something and being a critical reader I think because you lose aspects of something if you can only look at it one way and being critical doesn't mean that you can only be negative and it also means you don't always be positive. There's, I think that kind of gets lost when it comes to reviewing. Hi, this is editing me. I just wanted to add as well because there's a point I missed that also what I think is really important is that you can say why you feel something about a certain book so why you like a particular aspect of it why you don't like it and just kind of that digging deeper into why you feel like this you know for for years I just would be like I really like Ari and Dante but I couldn't properly articulate it and I'd just be like yeah because it's really good and I love this whereas now I've really been able to kind of go into it and pick it apart and I try and apply that to when I read other books as well why do I feel like this about this particular thing why is this thing struck me in such a way whether it be positive or negative and I think that why is really good to remember when analyzing something I think one thing that really helped me when trying to become a more critical reader because like I said for a really long time I wasn't like it genuinely wasn't until I was kind of late teens early 20s that I really really started to amp up the way that I read books and sort of change the way I read books is 
um i would break do that breakdown so i would kind of have sticky tabs for cat like you know like blue for characters orange for plot yellow for writing um sometimes even specific characters I will show you an example. So I haven't spoken about this because it's not finished, but I am currently annotating my first ever copy of Ari and Dante. This is it. Um, and I have made notes all in it. I've done some stuff all in it. I did a bit of painting. It's absolutely delightful. You can see it has, obviously I've, I've not gotten to the end yet, um, but I've done this much. And as you can see, there are lots of sticky tabs and the sticky tabs mean different things. Um, so uh pink is references to other things uh orange is family and friendship yellow is writing blue is dante and green is ari so that is that's my thoughts on those things and that really helps because when i'm reading it i've made myself kind of look out for those things i've made myself think okay so i'm looking out for anything which sort of defines ari and i'm looking out for anything which sort of defines dante or the characters and family and i think having that in mind when i go in and having those sticky tabs next to me because i always sort of like keep them next to me wherever i'm reading and wherever i'm writing in it having them there really helps because then i think okay i'm looking for this i'm looking for this so then when I'm reading, I'm more aware that like, okay, so this part of the plot does this and this characterization is for this. And then writing that down, whatever book it is, because I try and do it now for books that I have. And this year I've actually set up a book journal, like a reading journal to review every book that I read, stick it in, make it like a big thing. Um, and obviously like I still want to read for fun so I try not to make it like I am writing a GCSE essay. I like having that and I like having those sticky tabs especially when I first started trying to be a more critical reader. It really makes me kind of look in and think okay so I liked that or I didn't like that. My last point when it comes to being a critical reader is that you can be a critical reader of a particular book. You know I am a critical reader of Ariane Dante but it is my favourite book ever and there are so many positive like most of these are positive points like because I love this but but I have picked apart all of those positive points and explained why and gone into why and how they make me feel and all of that jazz that is being a critical reader someone else could read this book have just as many points but then be negative I don't understand why you would no I'm joking um because some people this book wouldn't be for them and just because someone has a different critical viewpoint does not necessarily mean that your viewpoint is wrong and I think that's what's really important is that like some people will absolutely despise a book some people will absolutely love a book you may feel the complete opposite and that's fine I think when someone has been negatively critical of something you feel like you should be negatively critical of it obviously there are uh exceptions if it's you know like jk rowling and obviously if it's harmful let's be critical let's be negatively critical i think online particularly being critical and critiquing certain things and picking up on certain things has become a very big thing and i think it's so important but i think it's important to kind of have that breakdown understand that being critical doesn't always mean bad it can also mean being good and it is exploring every element rather than just jumping and being like this is awful and understanding that someone saying one thing about like oh, okay so the writing was not particularly my favorite but i love this character is not an attack on the novel it's not an attack on someone's book it's just it wasn't for them but they can be critical by looking at all elements of something so yes that was my thoughts um and just a couple of things i've learned by trying to become a more critical reader and what being a critical reader actually means thank you guys for watching if you are new here then i make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things so if you want to stick around and join us feel free to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and as usual all the links to my other social medias and also my showing to things podcast are in the description down below thank you guys for watching i hope you're doing really 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 well and i will see you next time goodbye